Good evening, you're watching CNN Money Switzerland. I'm Hannah Wise with the latest news headlines on Tuesday the 23rd of June. Nestle is changing the name of some of its products as companies move to eliminate marketing rooted in racial stereotypes. The company said it will rename its Redskins and Chico's Sweets sold in Australia and its Colombian brand Beso de Negra after racism demonstrations and Black Lives Matters movements put renewed pressure on businesses to rethink their brands. Switzerland needs tougher sanctions and controls over gold imported into the country. That's one of the conclusions of a report released today by the Federal Audit Office after a review into supervision of the precious metals sector. Refineries in Switzerland do have a duty of care when it comes to the origin of precious metals, but the watchdog said that the current supervisory system falls short, leaving room for rules to be exploited. New jobs postings dropped by over a quarter in the last three months due to the coronavirus crisis, with hotels, restaurants and personal services worst affected. That's according to ADECO's latest job market index. The number of job advertisements between April and June fell 27%. Now, European stocks enjoyed one of their best days in two weeks after economic data in June showed the downturn eased for a second month as businesses benefited from the reopening of their economies. IHS markets flash PMI showed output in manufacturing and services continued to fall, but at a slower pace. And the Swiss Economic Institute has in fact downgraded its forecast for GDP here in Switzerland to minus 5% for 2020 after a survey of economists earlier this month. For 2021, it predicts a rebound of 4.2%. Now, six, the Swiss Stock Exchange completed a 2.75 billion Swiss franc takeover deal of the Spanish BME Stock Exchange earlier this month. Described by six as a major milestone, the deal gives Switzerland a foothold within the European Union. BME had also attracted interest from Euronext, but the exchange pulled out of the race back in March without making an official offer. Now its CEO, Stefan Bouchner, explained to me why his company walked away from the deal as the exchange launches its first ESG fund. Stefan Bouchner, welcome to CNN Money Switzerland. You are, of course, the CEO of Euronext, the European-based stock exchange. Uh, you've just recently announced an ESG fund. Uh, its initiatives and services you've described as a significant step for Euronext. Why is it so important? It is so very important because uh, there is an increasing demand both on the issuers front and on the investors front to drive more investments towards companies and projects that are uh, driven to uh, sustainable growth. I mean, clearly investors' preference have changed massively over the past few years. They used to look for uh, liquidity, for growth, for yield. Now they are looking for yield, liquidity and growth, but also for compliance with the sustainable development and sustainable growth objectives. But why go ahead and start this without EU guidance that hasn't been published yet? Well, because um, uh, there is a, in parallel two, two streams, uh, private sectors driven uh, efforts to, to drive more money towards sustainable efforts, sustainable development efforts, and in parallel, uh, the taxonomy uh, efforts deployed by the European Commission to, to create a sort of new accounting land, because that's what it is all about, to define what is green, what is not green, and to make sure that uh, we have a, a common understanding of what is ESG compliant or not. But so, without that, that, that uh, achievement, clearly investors want to find their way. So will it adhere to EU standards when they are announced? What's your, cover, what's your criteria? How rigorous? is your criteria? Well, we do work with partners. We don't invent out of, out of the box what is green and what is not green. We work with uh, specialized uh, companies, like in the case of the uh, index we've launched uh, uh, a few days ago, uh, Visio, uh, which is now part of Moody's, and uh, we, we, we work together to, to make sure that um, there is a sort of solid, sustainable, compact, but um, uh, 
uh, homogeneous uh, set of uh, data points to benchmark uh, uh, outperformers in, in the sectors. How has the COVID-19 situation impacted inflows? You said it's been going on for years, but how about the last few months? Good question. Uh, interestingly enough, the inflow uh, of, of uh, additional money in, uh, in funds has increased by 30 billion uh, during, uh, during the COVID crisis at the time when uh, there was a significant uh, outflow of, uh, of, um, of money from those funds. So clearly the ESG segment in funds has been the best benefactor from, from uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis because it's clear that everyone understands that post-crisis, uh, more capex will be needed in the health sector, in the, uh, in the green sector in terms of energy, and that therefore um, there will be opportunities for for funding these new projects. And of course, Euronext has been a big topic here in Switzerland because you've been fighting uh, over the, uh, the, the purchase of the Spanish stock exchange with SIX, the Swiss-based uh, exchange. Was it a blow for you to lose out? Well, there was no fight because we decided not to overpay. I mean, it was a, it was a very, um, very interesting discussion where we looked at the asset we look at the price that six was committed to pay and six has different shoulder base which is very different from ours uh, we are a listed company they are not a listed company they can do things we cannot do and uh, we believe that uh, the price they were offering could not justify it could not be justified to our shoulders and we decided not to be part of that of that project we uh, our, our project was very different from, from theirs we had a, a total uh, european union integration project with a profound integration of the technology stack and the company within the Euronext uh, single liquidity pool, single of the book, single technology platform. The six project was, was very different. A different price and a different project. So that's why we decided not to, to be part of that, that uh, process. And so how will you expand in the future? Is there more M&A on the horizon? Yeah, we have um, a sort of very clear M&A roadmap. On the one hand, we want to diversify our revenue streams. That's why we have a wide a Forex company in 17 in the, in, uh, in the US, Fast Patch, which is on the one Forex. That's why we have acquired uh, a power electricity platform uh, or trading platform in, in Oslo, no cool. Uh, that's why we have acquired to a certain extent the Irish Stock Exchange, which is a leader in, in bond listing. So we, we try to diversify our top line and we look at all sorts of opportunities in the funds business, in the, in the post trade business, in the data business that can help us diversifying more. The president of EPFL says that the coronavirus pandemic was a real-time test of digital competence and it showed society is extremely exposed to cybercrime. Martin Vettely was speaking at the launch of Trust Valley, which is an initiative in the western cantons of Vaux and Geneva to position the region as an international hub of competence in cybersecurity and digital governance. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Vetterly. Tell me about EPFL's role in Trust Valley. So EPFL has created the Center for Digital Trust a couple of years ago, actually 2018. And uh, this is sort of a model of cooperation between industry, the governments, NGOs and academia um, to look into the questions of uh, cybersecurity, trust in the digital age. And so why do we need a Trust Valley? <laughs> Well, it's to have all the actors around the table. So many of the actors all are already working with EPFL inside the Center for Digital Trust. And then there are more actors. And I think there is a, a perfect opportunity to have something coherent here in the region. But what do initiatives like this do in a practical sense? Well, the pandemic showed how much we were dependent on digitalization, on being online, of doing all processes online. I mean, uh, there is these jokes that COVID-19 did more for digitalization than any CTO in a large organization. And so we had a real-time test and we saw that on certain dimensions we were ready, on others we had still work to do, but also that in these cases we are extremely exposed to cyber attacks, but also to the question of trust in the media, fake news and so on in the middle of the pandemic. And that, I mean, it brings to mind the question of how do you rebuild trust when it's lost? I mean, it's not an easy thing to bring back. 
That sounds like a political question to me, <laughs> but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so in the, in the history of technology, every time a new technology came, there were questions raised because, you know, it can be used for good, it can be used for bad, and every time society as a whole had to adapt, and this is what we are going through right now. And who pays for this? Well, we collectively pay for this, just like we pay for healthcare collectively, like we pay for security in the physical sense collectively, we are going to pay for this collectively as well. To Swiss COVID, talk to me about where we are with that. Well, the Swiss Parliament just voted for the adoption of Swiss COVID at a rate of 29% uh, acceptance and, you know, a few people against and people abstaining. So there is a very strong support by the Swiss political system, by the administration for Swiss COVID as being one piece of the puzzle that we have to solve in order to be ready uh, to manage the pandemic and if possible to avoid a second wave. So Swiss COVID has an important role to play. It has also helped the digitalization of the Swiss healthcare system. Yeah, I know it's been a bit, it's, it's been a lot of discussion about especially privacy and, and these kinds of issues and where do you stand on this? Okay, what I find quite amazing is that, you know, until the pandemic hit, nobody was really very excited about privacy. Everybody was using the GAFAMs, being tracked with GPS and everything. And the very minute that we need to deal with the pandemic, that we are in an exceptional situation, you know, a few people get very concerned about this. And now what I can see here as a scientist is that Swiss COVID is the state of the art of the best design for privacy. It doesn't mean that there is not some leak of privacy, but the design has been adopted by many other countries and Switzerland was in the leading role. So you don't anticipate any cybersecurity issues? There are, okay. You know, never say never, right? Uh, I think the, the question that was on the table is that how much privacy leaks there is. And my answer is that there is very little differential privacy leak with respect to what we are already in right now. Okay. Now, could there be a cyber attack on, you know, uh, the Ministry of Health in Switzerland? Of course there could be, right? And this you, know, you can never uh, avoid. But the design of the protocol for Swiss COVID, I think, is state of the art. It's the best I know of. And you brought together Google and Apple. Well, Google and Apple were starting to think about these issues and they adopted the protocol that was spearheaded by APFL and ETH. So, in a sense, you brought them together. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to oversell the thing, but very clearly we have influenced the decisions that were made at Google and Apple to put new primitives to do proximity uh, tracing into their operating systems. And it's a great success story of Swiss technology. Raiffeisen, the main title sponsor of the Swiss Super League, is seeing strong demand for content on two of its sport portals, We Love Football and We Love Snow. And it's not just about coronavirus pushing fans online either, as our sports correspondent Matt Layton discovered. Andre, for Raiffeisen Bank, how do you see the sponsorship market and how has it been reacting in the last six months? Okay. Um, well, from, from our own perspective, we, we are sticking to, to long-term engagement, so there was no big change, uh, big change during this, uh, this time. In a general perspective of the market, I mean, you could see that um, for, for new engagement, new sponsoring deals, it was quite a hard time because nobody wanted to, to go into new deals. What you could also um, see was that the prolongation of deals, uh, there was a big solidarity from companies to prolongate their engagement right at the moment to show their solidarity to, to the clubs or, 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 or um, federations at the moment. Uh, for small term companies, which are basically more um, affected from the COVID crisis, it, 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 they might step out of it. And that would then also, of course, have an, uh, an effect on, on the, the sponsoring or on the people who are looking for sponsoring at the moment. So if they can, they will. But obviously, everyone, like in all markets, has, has been suffering a little bit. You are the naming and have been the naming sponsor of the Swiss Super League, which is the, uh, the football for the last, uh, well, since 2012. Clearly, with no football, did that affect you? And, 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 and how did you, how are your tactics going forward through your portal, We Love Football? 
well, of, of course, it, it did affect you since it was since no soccer was played. Uh, we we haven't been on on TV and we no fans in the stadium. Um, of course, there were discussion then going on with uh, with the clubs and with uh, with the league about uh, I mean what's what's going on. We have been informed all the time, and uh, we tried basically to to get some other assets in there uh, for for them. On the on the portal side, it was was quite interesting to see you know that people since you know everything was shut down are still looking for information and, and looking for content. And so from the portal side on, on Wheel of Football, the, the traffic was, was very well and we could still interact with the people. And that's basically where our, our strategy with his own media platforms uh, are paying out very well. Digital media used to be for the under 25s. I, I understand that's changing because we're all becoming mainly forced to become uh, competent. Has that affected your, your model and the way you see things? Well, absolutely. I mean, we, we see that, uh, you know, the, the, the media media habits of the people are changing over the last uh, couple of years uh, quite dramatically. You know, before people were informing themselves, especially, let's say, a little bit with the older generations, just in newspapers or linear TV. And, and at the moment, you can clearly see that all of them are, in the meanwhile, you know, they have their mobile phones and, and looking there for information, going to social streams. Um, and we can clearly follow that on, on our platforms. You know, we, we haven't been a, a media mark, uh, media brand before. And so people were looking there for us or, or seeing our information, our contents, and, and basically consuming it. So uh, that you can very well see. And it's not just the younger people. It's, it's also the little bit the older generations. Um, Snowsport, for example, you know, the, the, the highest population in Snowsport we have is, is older than 65 on social media channels, which is quite, uh, quite amazing. So... Uh, it's a very well uh, sign that um, social media is, is today for, for everybody. How can you as a bank um, in the sponsoring take advantage of the fact that we're, we're all media savvy? Are you going to upgrade your portal, which is already very fine? Do you have any other tactics to tell us about? Well, I, no, I, I wouldn't say we, we just stick to the, to the strategy we have. And, you know, and the thing is in sponsoring, and I think that's just a general idea about it. It's, you don't reach the people by just, uh, you know, Put your logo on on some walls or some some shirts i mean that's you need to do that and that's also quite important to do that but uh, basically what you as a sponsor want is to try to to start interaction with the people uh, who loves the sport you are a sponsor of and and basically the strategy of doing that over content works very well and we stick to that and basically of course what we try to do is uh, to to going a step further in in more content, better content, and then reach out over more channels and probably also over over some corporations with with other media players. That could could be very well um, a case. Traditionally, when we're talking about sponsorship digital, it's all the currency has been about size and reach. Has that developed, and how? I think we are at the moment in in the changing phase where, where it really changed you know there's still big platforms where it's, it's absolute that's the currency so, so the bigger the logo the, 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 the bigger the reach the more you pay but sponsors are now really changing the way because since you know they want to reach basically the fans behind the, the club or or, or the, the platform uh, the new currency would, will be the um, the size of community you can reach with uh, with your sponsorship times um the the channels and times the frequency you can play those channels or the club is interacting over those channels with um with with the fans and i think that's that will be the new currency and i think there's especially it's in in this time where you know there was no tv coverage and nothing like that you know you could still interact with the fans and if you have a sponsoring where the club is has been able to 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 interact over other channels with the fans and you then give, gives you an asset and i think uh, the market will tend uh, more and more toward um, toward this currency well, that's you all up to date this Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And all our content is available anytime you like on our website, cnnmoney.ch. Bye bye.